Hello. Let us start this session on SDLC models. We are continuing from the previous session. In the previous session we talked about waterfall model and uh, incremental model. There is another model called spiral model. Okay. This spiral model is very similar to incremental. Many times customers will prefer incremental as we discussed when the requirements are not fully known or there may be some changes later or they are not ready to wait or there is a pricing pressure, right? Incremental model uh, in an extended way is called spiral model. In this case also, not all requirements are known upfront. They only start with some requirements. Okay, uh, I can draw something over here. Assume that this is like a software spectrum. This quadrant is the requirements quadrant. Okay, I am uh, starting with this is requirements quadrant, right? I am starting with some amount of requirements initially. Then, before adding it to the product, there is something happening that is called risk analysis. There are new requirements and they want to do the risk analysis before they take that, right? For those requirements, they do this risk analysis. Once the risk analysis is done, after that it is standard, uh, like uh, design, code, right? This is standard. Once risk is evaluated based on that, then after that you code, then after that you get uh, test and deploy, right? Test and deploy, this happens. So what happens is we take a set of requirements, then we finish this. So assume that 200 requirements we have taken from the customer, we have done requirements analysis, then risk analysis, design and code, test and deploy. Now customer will go see the market, there may be new requirements coming up. They will add those new requirements. This is nothing but an enhancement. So you are adding the next spiral. But before coding it, you do again risk analysis. In spiral model, we are introducing another phase called risk analysis before design. Then once the risk is evaluated, then design and code, then deploy. Again, go to the market. Your competitors may be giving new products. Those may have new requirements, new features. Take that. Again do a anal risk analysis, again do a code it and then build it, test it. If you take an example of say Google, again these are all published information, there is nothing to hide. Initially they did not have something called uh, waves, right? So they integrated with the existing email system and collaboration system, so they introduced waves. But before doing it and then releasing to the market, they would have got lot of risk analysis. Typically, this risk analysis will be based on uh, market acceptance and readiness. For example, I may give a great feature to the customers, but the customer may not even need it, right? First of all, there should be somebody saying, is there a need? Then if I give that, will they accept it? Again, if you look at Google along with the email, they have introduced something called buzz, very similar to that of Twitter. Initially, it was not there. It is strictly an enhancement to our existing email system. But they introduced buzz. But before introducing buzz, they would have done analysis. So, take requirement, get the new requirement, maybe new, maybe from the competitors, do a risk analysis, design and code, test and deploy. This keeps on going like a spiral. This is essentially incremental, but you are introducing a risk analysis. This particular thing in incremental model, it becomes 
spiral model right then there is another model called extreme programming it is also known as in some companies called agile programming agile development typically this will work again before that there is one question that came when to use the spiral model when you expect market acceptance risks right typically uh, they have to talk to the end users see whether they really need it do a research then come back then do a technology analysis then is there a problem with the technology that you are going to use so when you expect a risk in technology when you expect a risk in users when you expect a risk in market acceptance introduced you, you introduce spiral model extreme programming model typically used in uh, startups right in smaller teams say uh, 5 to 15 members very smaller team and uh, highly skilled highly skilled teams right that means a guy has got already 10 years of coding experience or he's a cat in the coding and design then for a smaller team basically in extreme programming we try to minimize a lot of documentation again that doesn't mean that documentation is based for a smaller group for a for a highly motivated group for a startup company you don't have a lot of time and luxury to do a lot of design analysis everything so what they do is they first try to dis do a typical uh, discussion discussion of requirements right take just uh, one or two requirements not more than that not even tens or hundreds take one or two discuss thoroughly discuss the design then directly code discuss the design need not document it you don't have to write a design document but directly code it okay then test it if it works then integrate with the previous models if it doesn't work again discuss do this once everything works then document minimally document minimally because in startup you have to first create the product customers want only products not the documents again when I say customers end users uh, for example I don't have to ask the design document of Google or Skype it doesn't matter during the initial first one or two years startup time they will do extreme programming but extreme programming will not work in larger teams if you have 550 member team extreme programming will not work they will use a concept called the scrum meeting in extreme programming daily morning meeting okay so what did you do what are we going to do today discuss thoroughly maybe one 15 20 minutes discuss then discuss individually then code this is typically called extreme programming only thing is they give a lot of importance for unit testing the basic modules that you build must be extremely robust if the blocks are extremely good building blocks are good obviously the final product will be good so they will try to do everything meticulously and try to automate unit tests because instead of automating end-to-end -end tests they will try to automate unit tests essentially this extreme programming is they say again a very very minimal version of incremental model instead of taking tens or hundreds of requirements take just one or two discuss code try to minimize documentation this is used in small teams startups highly motivated and calibered teams there is another model called prototyping model prototyping model again it is not a strict full life cycle model this is typically like a marketing uh, tool 
you meet a customer in the US and uh, the customer says customer is not clear in exactly what he wants customer says hey I want this but I'm not sure how it should look like so what you do is build a UI layout a build with uh, navigation okay first this page happens then the next page happens just like a pure HTML page or pictures have a good designer do this demo this to customer so you are creating the UI prototype of the product customer will say then only he will be in a position to envision he will say yeah, I want a blue color here but which blue dark blue light blue I don't know but you show it then I will give corrections there are certain customers who are highly uh, innovative and uh, maybe socially uh, doing a lot of social networking related stuff end user experience stuff it's very difficult to predict the end user psychology and liking so in that kind of products typically you have to go with design then rub it up then do it out right do a design then erase it or alter it then uh, code it right so first build UI once client is fine then apply incremental model to develop take maybe two three screens at a time show the UI uh, client will give alterations here and there once client is saying oh now yeah this is what I want correct this screen I am fine then develop that screen and that functionality this is typically happening in many places because when customers are not clear again the pre startup stages right uh, this is called a proof of concept when customers are in this stage uh, build and show again there is no point in building the entire functionality in the back and show only the UI what you see is what you get right this is the principle what you see is what uh, you get busy week right if you see the screen then obviously after that you can do a lot of better programming on that this helps a lot in getting the customers pulse okay we will stop with this uh, in this session we talked about incremental sorry the prototyping model agile or extreme programming model and spiral model there are other models but they are all very less frequently used in the software industry waterfall incremental spiral prototyping and extreme programming these are all the highly used models across most of the companies okay we will stop here